still alive. Some of them will survive for a long time, but eventually they die, actually. Here's one other example. This is from Oregon. Uh, again, phytopteras will produce lots of zoospore, and along the streams, you see the single trees are dead. Basically, their roots are killed. And in some cases, you will see, again, the same type of lesions going up uh, towards the stem and girdling the tree and eventually uh, killing it. So uh, what happened after the year of 2000 was um, in California, we uh, encountered this big problem, which now they call it Southern Oak Death Pathogen. It is, again, a Phytoptera species. And this time, it was causing huge uh, mortalities on diverse plants, including oaks and um, broccoli species, but less conifers. So you can see in a forest setting how damaging it, it can be, but single trees uh, still survive. Now, the strange thing is this pathogen, act, uh, this Phytoptera species acted a little different. Here's another image, and this is a hillside. So, I mentioned that you will, uh, you will need water, and those zoospores will swim in the water, but how do they get up, st up st uh, the slope? Like, some where they have to fly to get there, and this happens in a very short time. So, what we have seen is this pathogen, uh, in this case, we are killing the trees from top to bottom. Previously, it was always from ground up. Now, this was a totally something different that we have never seen before in temperate forests. So, when you look at it a little more closely, then on the stem, you will again see those, uh, maybe not these things here, but the, some bleeding. And then, if you shave the bark, you will see this necrosis again underneath. Um, and here are on the shoes, on twigs you see this very dark, um, blackish, almost uh, necrotic areas that starts on the petiole or uh, on the foliage. I think I have a few more images. And when, you, when there is a lot of moisture, a lot of water, and then here you will see those four structures form. And I mentioned one of the sporangia, and then here in this case, some other spores called chlamydospores, long-lasting spores will form too. So they will form lots of spores on the foliage in this case, so not in the soil. And so we started to become much more curious about whether there are any other Phytophthora species that can cause similar type of damage. Or is there like Ramorum? Our interest was mostly the Ramorum, the southern oak that pathogen. And eventually we found so many other species. This was in New Zealand. This was in the U.S. and here these are from West Coast. But those symptoms, when you look at the foliage, you will never think that this is Phytophthora. That's what we thought at least at that time. So, and all this were caused by Phytophthora species, and in this case, different ones. This is a new species, this is a new species, this is describing the year 2002, this is new species, this is new species, this is new species. Everything all we didn't know actually, and they have been described it in the last six, seven years prior to that. And uh, this um, slide, if you want, uh, it's on this computer, you can upload it and uh, use it if you like. And uh, so, um, just to give you an idea about this group, Phytophthora species, uh, after the a high species, which was Phytophthora infestans, the potato leaf like pathogen. Uh, until 1996, about 62 species have been described. A number of them are tropical pathogens too, like Palmyra. Um, you will find it here. Um, um, Citricola, you will find it. Megacaria, you will find it. I can't see it right now from there. But anyway, there was about 60 species that we know until the year that I started my studies. Um, and then we really became much more interested to find all these other species in natural ecosystems. So we went to the forest, and uh, this is what I'm going to tell you the story. Um, and from 1996 to 2007, we have described about another 40 species, and 
every year there is more species described and we are rapidly increasing the number. So we almost doubled the 100 year in 10 years uh, in the species uh, assemblage. So how many more species? That's always we asking the questions. Um, how diverse is this group? We don't know really. And because uh, there has been uh, little studies in uh, microscopic organisms, uh, there is so much is, that is lacking. Here's the oomycete where the Phytophthora species belong. And we know about the best estimate is 4% is so far um, described. About 2,000 species in a oomycete in a chromista, namely. And some of those, like macromyces, for example, they will be like 67% look at this agaricolis or 50% um, in this case. Um, so the microscopic, the pathogenic organisms, we know very little about them. And whatever is there, is the majority has been not discovered. But we know about 4, 5, let's say 10% of whatever is there, that's what we know. 90% of we don't know actually. So that's why when we start to look for the ecosystems, then you start to find more and more species. And the, uh, also the fact is, all of them have been adapting at dif different conditions. They have different adaptation, different niches. Some will like very dry areas, some will like moist, some will like that particular tree, some exist in stream. So there's always um, areas where one species life compared to the other one and with that in mind we were starting to survey diverse areas to encompass all this diversity um, that exists. So um, of course we are asking other questions to what are these things are doing there. And a lot of them that I showed you the 62 species and then another 50 almost all of them are plant pathogens. So there are major issues with those uh, organisms too. So what are they think doing? What are their roles? And are they uh, primary pathogens or saprophytes? And there are so many species in streams which we don't know what they are doing. So we start to ask all these questions and some of them are answered through particular research projects. So I just want to give you an example with the oak decline case. So oak trees are dying in Europe in, uh, for centuries actually and this is an oak tree that looks like it's dying. <laughs> so chrome decline and reduced um, um, reduction of the foliage to lower branches and some branching tips or shoots are dying and um, reduced foliage. This is basically the symptom what you see on an oak tree. So in Aquarius. What is oak in Spanish? Probably. Robles. Yeah, Robles. Robles. Yeah, Robles. 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 Yeah. And here in, in Europe, um, I mentioned that we had so mm. many oak decline instances. The same happened in the US too. From There are reports from 1927, from 18th century, etc. But there was always this report about oaks are dying here and there. And in this particular study, here is also a lot of reports from U, uh, US too. It's a not, not a new uh, case. And many, many factors are involved why oak trees are dying. It's not always a pathogen, but sometimes it is an ecological issue, sometimes it's drought, and sometimes it's an insect too. But there is always this interaction that once, when before a tree dies, an oak tree, you have to have multiple stresses. So this was a complex case, but we were curious about whether they would do uh, what this Phytophthora species can do on their roots. Maybe they are killing the roots, and that's why trees are starting to die, and other factors and other uh, things can stress them too. So with any type of study, you have to find your method. I mean, once you establish your method, you're good to go. So you can actually open up doors and the methods that we have um, established was collecting soil samples from four different directions of a tree and then mixing those up and putting those into the box 